All right, well, welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Alex. I'm going to be taking you through the Aplos e Final 2013 990EZ webinar. Quite the mouthful, but it should go pretty quick. Uh, a little bit about us Aplos is an online software catered towards nonprofit organizations, and we offer software geared towards fund accounting, donor management, and e file. So what we're going to take a look at today is the e-file portion. I'm going to show you what that looks like, how to begin a return, and then go over how to move through the 990EZ and uh, who needs to file it, so on and so forth. I will be opening it up for some question and answer time at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know via the little question uh, form in your GoToWebinar control panel, and I will do my best to answer everything at the end. Keep in mind, that while we provide this service for the 990EZ and the 990N, we are not tax professionals. So we have developed the service and we have the software and we can help with the software and help you maybe understand a couple of things. But if you have questions that are more uh, tailored specifically to your organization or whether the IRS needs a certain thing, we are always going to defer to a tax professional to answer those questions. So uh, there might be some questions or something that I will touch on, but um, you know, if it, if it goes a little outside of our expertise, I recommend seeking out a tax professional. But uh, let's go through this presentation here. So Apple's e-file 2013 990EZ. So if, for anybody that has uh, filed a, an IRS return before, you know that it can be quite the process. It takes a while, it's intimidating, it's confusing. Uh, and so what we've done is made a tool to really make the 990EZ quite simple. So the benefits to using Aplos e-file include the, uh, the assurance that Aplos makes sure that you don't miss any necessary fields or schedules. The number one reason a 990EZ is rejected by the IRS is due to incomplete information or inaccurate schedules. So the, the 990EZ itself is only four pages, but as you answer questions and, and put in certain amounts in that form, you will trigger these schedules that you will also need to fill out and uh, submit with your return. <clears throat> what we've done in Aplos is found all of those triggers and identified all of those in the software so that if you answer a question or enter an amount or do whatever that triggers another schedule, we will automatically make you fill that in as well so that it, when you e-file with the IRS or print it out, you know that all information has been entered and all schedules have been completed that you're gonna need. We also have question and section specific help throughout the form. Uh, so if you have a question or need some guidance on how to answer a question, there's a little black question mark, which you'll see here in a little bit, that if you press that, you'll get the IRS guidance, which is literally copy and paste from the IRS help for the form and the schedules. And then we have an Aplos version, which is kind of a dumbed down, you know, layman term kind of translation between the IRS speak and what actually makes sense. So uh, we have that help content throughout the form and it's all tailored to the specific question you're trying to find the answer for. So it's not like, you know, you're trying to find the answer to this question, you have to decipher a whole, you know, form of, uh, of help content. So uh, we have that provided throughout the form. <clears throat> your progress is also tracked and saved so you can complete the form at your convenience. If you need to do a little bit here and a little bit there or leave for a period of time to go get some information and come back, Aplos will track how far you have gotten in the form and uh, so that way you don't have to start all over again. We also do automatic calculations. Uh, for those of you who are not gifted in math, this is very helpful. So uh, for instance, how this plays out is if you do a, uh, you know, it's, let's say if you fill out a piece of the form that uh, you know, needs to subtract from another piece and then tie into a later piece, all of those calculations are done for you. And that kind of ties into the second little bullet there of automatic information population. What that means is if we ask for a, pe a piece of information and that needs to be multiple places throughout the form, we will just put it there for you. Since we already know it needs to be there, you don't need to do it twice. And then lastly, we have immediate electronic submission to the IRS. Once you finish this return, and if you choose to e-file, you can also choose to print and mail it if you'd like, but if you choose to e-file, that is submitted very shortly after you click that button, and then as soon as the IRS receives it, it'll check on their system, they'll send it back, whether it was accepted or rejected for whatever reason. If it is rejected, uh, we will get some feedback as to why, and then you can go in, make the changes, and resubmit. So it's not a one and done type situation. You can always go back and make changes until it's perfect for the IRS. 
So before you get started, before you start the 990 Easy in general, and then let alone with Aplos, here's some things you're going to want to collect. One is a balance sheet. This shows your assets equaling your liabilities plus your equity for the organization, and chances are if you use any accounting software, whether it's Aplos or QuickBooks or anything, there should be a balance sheet report, as well as an income statement. The income statement shows how much money you've received, less how much you've spent, and then that equals your net income for the period of time, uh, which is the 2013 year. So go find those two reports. Uh, you'll also need a list of your officer's hours and compensation, so um, have that available as well. You're going to need a copy of your application form, 1023, and a determination letter from the IRS recognizing your org organization's tax-exempt status. Those two things have certain information like your EIN, your tax year, and uh, other official information you're going to need to put in there. You'll also need a description and summary of your organization's programs and services, which is basically what are the three things you do and describe them. So if you're a nonprofit that you know uh, adopts three-legged cats, then that would be one of your programs and services for you to list and uh, for you to you know have available on that form. And then you'll uh, lastly need a list of the highest paid employees, contractors, and compensation, uh, but only if over $100,000. If it's less than that, don't worry about it. Otherwise, collect that and have that available for the form as well. So lastly, the, the thing I want to touch on here is anxiety about the form. Uh, like I said earlier, any IRS form can be intimidating, but uh, as you go through the Athlos e-file, just keep this kind of stuff in mind that with all the necessary materials and inf information gathered, the form can be completed in as little as 30 minutes. So if you've got all the information and you click through it, it doesn't take very long. Apples make sure you uh, also don't miss any required information. And we have the contextualized help throughout the form. So uh, checks and balances, making sure that you're informed and that you can get the support when you need it, both the IRS version and the Aplos. Uh, we also have support staff available. So again, we're not tax professionals, but if you need some help moving through the form or just have a quick question, feel free to let us know. And then lastly, before you submit to the IRS and finish the return, there are multiple opportunities to review the information and make any changes needed. So let's take a look. So that is my little spiel. So let's take a look at here. So uh, if you've been to our website, it is applosoftware.com. And uh, if you don't see the selection here at the top, you might need to scroll down and click on e-file. But when you click on that, you can register for a free e-file account. And once you do, you're going to land here, which is our e-file dashboard. We currently have the ability to e-file the forms 990N and the 990EZ, which is the one we're going over today. And if you notice here, it'll tell you who is eligible to file this form. This is for any nonprofit with between $50,000 and $200,000 in gross receipts and less than $500,000 in assets. So if you fall within that range, you're going to file this return. Uh, each return that we can offer here, 2012 and 2013, are both $40 per return, $39.99. And we don't ask for payment until the very end of the filing. So you can use this. You can go through it all. You can enter all the information. But right at the end, when before uh, you need to either e-file or print it, that's when we ask for payment. So you can use the form up until that point for free. All right. So when you're ready, go ahead and click Start a New 990 Easy Now. Uh, I've already got one in progress, so I'm going to move to that one right here. And what I'm going to do is just quickly click through all of these fields and show you kind of what we've touched on already. And that is, it saves all your information. So I've already been through this. So you can see that information is already populated here. Uh, you just click Save and Continue once you have all of the information entered. And you can see there are those little black question marks. If you click those, then you'll have the IRS guidance. And for some of these, let me find one here for you. Uh, some of these, we have both the IRS guidance and the Aplos help. So if you want to hear the official IRS you know, uh, text, there's that there. But then we also have the Apples version here, which is a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to understand. Alrighty. Uh, okay, so you move through here, pick the type of account, tax exempt status, you've got your list of officers, which is what you're going to need uh, there. And then you get into the financial piece. So here you can see that we uh, do the calculations for you. So if at the beginning of the year you had 100,000, at the end of the year you had 200,000, then we know that your net income for the period needs to be 100,000. So if that doesn't line up, then it's going to give you a little uh, red text here. The net assets on your balance sheet do not equal the end of the year total. So then you would need to go through and find where the discrepancy lies, which is, let's see here. I'll change this to 40,000. 
then the math balances, that error goes away, and you are able to continue the form. So that's just an example of our little checks and balances there. We don't let you go through it if it's not correct. So you would move through the form. Step four, uh, as you've entered information and triggered certain things, you're going to see the different schedules that you need to complete. And each of these schedules can be clicked on. It'll walk you through the different questions for that particular schedule. And you'll finish that up as well. And then step five is just information about you. So here's information about the preparer. Uh, here's also the officer that signs off on the, who authorizes this form to be submitted to the IRS. And then step six is just payment, review, and filing. So here's where you would enter your payment. You would also move to this review screen to where you can go back and make any changes. And then once you're done, you can click mark return as complete. And then you can either choose to e-file with the IRS or mail the return to the IRS manually. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long. As long again, as long as you have the information readily available, you can move through this form very uh, quickly. Uh, it'll identify all the schedules you need to complete so you can mark those and, uh, and finish those up as well and then just enter a little bit of information about yourself, pay for it, and then you're ready to e-file to the IRS. So that is the 2013 990EZ with Apple's e-file. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm gonna open it up for some Q&A here session here uh, for a little bit. So again, uh, there's a little question field in your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to submit any questions via that, and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself for just a minute and then I'll come back.